the storyline. Now, Laurie Brett, aka Jane Beale, joins us now. Welcome. It's great to see you. It's great to be here. And we've been loving these vintage oh, senders things. Last week's fabulous. Oh my goodness, Peggy Pe and Pat. Pat and Peggy. Oh, <laughs> that was great. But before we get into all things Albert Square, let's let's uh, just quickly catch up on the story so far that's leading up to tonight's classic episode, shall we? The story so far. It's Jane and Ian's wedding day, but the residents of Albert Square have other things on their minds. Dot's hiding a dark secret. After letting her son Nick die of an overdose, the body is laying undiscovered next door. But how long before somebody finds it? Phil's also acting shifty, even more so than usual. What is he up to? And ten whole months since Lucy Beale's body was found on Warford Common, the secrets and lies surrounding her mysterious murder are starting to unravel. There are plenty of people in the frame, but the question on everyone's lips is, who killed Lucy Beale? Oh, I love a duff duff. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Can't now, go the wrong. character of Jane was pretty central to the storyline. Um, how long did you have to keep the identity of the murder a secret? It was, uh, there was three cast members who knew the secret for about three, four months. Uh, and it was, how do you keep a secret? You tell no one. But everybody and their dog was trying to of get course. it from us. Of oh course. My goodness. Well, the bookies and everything, all the yeah. betting was going on and blah, blah, blah. So it was just really, it was really, really difficult to... Um, to, to even be at work as well. And, and you never let it slip? Not once, no. Ah, see, she's a pro. Absolutely. Let's have a little look then from tonight's episode. This is where it all starts to go a bit pear-shaped. <laughs> OK, I think we all need to calm down. One of us. It has to be. What are you talking about? It was here. Everything happened here. Peter, for goodness sake. She told you. What? Lauren said she told you. Oh, she didn't tell me, not exactly. She gave me a card. Well, what card? What did he say? It said that Lucy was killed in this house. So it must have been someone who was here. Yeah. Now, that, that episode is part of the 30th anniversary of uh, the celebrations. Some of the scenes were actually live, weren't they? Yeah, that one was. Was it? Um, most of the stuff with the Beals was all live. Um, and uh, uh, the, there's giving birth that was live. But everything that the Beals did, pretty much, in the Beals' house, everything was oh. live. Was that really terrifying? Yes, it <laughs> aged me about 10 years. So you I must mean, have, you know, I mean, you must have rehearsed it so you knew it back to front. But did anything kind of go a little bit wrong on the actual night? Um, well, I mean, the, the, the famous one was the How's Adam uh, from Oh, Joe. oh you yeah. mean this one? <laughs> <laughs> How's Adam? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> See? I mean, oh. I love Joe Joyner all the more for that, though. But I love your face. How you kept a straight <laughs> face? Well, the problem was, I mean, I mean, you know, and the, th the whole country knew it was live then, you know, yes. I, I, and, and she's a fantastic actress, and everybody felt for her. But I had no lines to say afterwards, and I was thinking, what can I say? What can I say? What can I say? And just, I, I was about to say, Tanya, have you been drinking? When a third AD, Tish, took this man, re really massive decision to throw Mimi on, who played Cindy, on early. And for a third AD to take that, that, that chance to do that and think, is this the right thing to do as well, was really brave. And it was. So everybody just pulled together. As I say, I was trying to think of something to say. Joe held it together, I held it together. And as I say, someone threw Mimi on very quickly. Well, I think she got thrown through the door. Credit for holding it That was a real oh, test, wasn't it, of how professionally both were. <laughs> well done for that. And we're going to bring Joanna back because we found... Well, I didn't know this before, but apparently you were in Corrie back in 1973 as... Ken Barlow's love interest. I mean, batting above his weight. Oh, <laughs> totally. I think, I think he's agreeing. <laughs> Punch him. I was so the dog. I was so, he asked me to marry him. And off, I had off screen? <laughs> say, I said, oh, don't make me say these lines. And I had to say, my character, Elaine Perkins, had to say, no, I don't want to stay here in the street. It's so boring. And in my heart, as an actress, I was going, please keep me on for years. I'd love to be a regular. But I was out after eight episodes. I was just a passing love interest. Oh, killed by a hairdryer. Well, so. we we wondered how you would look as a landlady at the yeah. Queen Vic, because Thanks. that would be a great role, would wouldn't awesome. it? Awesome. Um, yes. Look. I mean, it would work, wouldn't it? <laughs> Get out of my. I can see you doing it. Get out of my pub. Exactly. <laughs> We've also got. What? Just for you, ladies. Michael in Coronation oh. Street. Oh yes. Now then, what are you oh. supposed to be there? I am a tennis professional. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> it was my first ever job. I was a tennis pro and I had to have a fight with Kevin Webster and he won. I mean, that... of all the things that you could be cast as a tennis player? Yeah. I'll do anything. I really will do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you can catch EastEnders right here on BBC One straight after this. Oh, it's a great episode. A really great episode. Now, coming up shortly, don't miss one of the most dramatic wildlife films I think we've ever shown. And we don't say that lightly. No, we? It genuinely, we it's were on the, the edge of our seat. It's a real emotional roller coaster as we get to see one mum's fight to protect her young. Now, from Saturday, theatres in England will be allowed to reopen, but only if they can ensure audience members remain socially distanced, which, of course, means a lot fewer bums on seats. So we, we just really wanted to know where, you know, where your head was at with this. It's, it, I'm despairing a little bit. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber tried to uh, show what a socially distanced performance would be like at the Palladium. Mm. So you've got seats, you can get about 34%. That's right, because Beverly Knight Beverly did, Knight didn't she, did. last week? So 34% of the seats uh, are, are able to be taken. Well, in the real world, in the commercial world of theatre where I come from, a musical costs so much to put on every every night, every week. You have to run at about 70% capacity just to break oh, even. Oh, wow. Right. So it doesn't make sense to do that in that sort of scenario. You then have the issue of the, the actors and the backstage crew on stage. You have the issue of going up to the loo. Mm. You can't walk past people in an aisle. So as much as it pains me, I, I, I don't see how it's going to work until we are in a position, certainly in the commercial theatre, where we can open up mm. more of the seats to people. It's just not and the same experience, it, it, yeah. is it? And, well, it's that, the that's same the other thing. I have occasionally played to a third full house. So have I. And, <laughs> and, and you know, it, it, you do it, and it, but it, it, it's not the same. And we go to the theatre mm. for that communal yeah. experience. For that immersive experience, yeah. 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 Well,